But first tonight, the endless hate, rage, hysteria, misinformation from Joe Biden, the media mob, Democrats, big tech, the woke corporate cowards. It's now hitting, if you can believe it, new levels of derangement and psychosis because the outright lies that are being spewed about Georgia's new voting law and proposals in Texas, it exposes just how corrupt, just how bitterly partisan our major institutions are and how they've become. They're like, well, Pravda, pure state-run propaganda outlets, and they are less interested in truth than ever before. So here on this program, we're going to do the job the mob and the media will never do, and we will separate fact from fiction for you and lay out what the law is and what it is not, and we will expose how abusively biased uh, the media is, the double standards are, the misinformation campaign being waged against election integrity. Oh, yeah. And Delaware's voting laws, far more restrictive than the new Georgia law. We begin where Joe Biden began his lies. This bill does not end voting hours early, Joe, if you're awake. I doubt it. In fact, it creates more early voting, more days to vote, more flexibility to vote. It adds another Saturday to vote and even keeps the precious ballot drop boxes that Democrats love. Here is South Carolina Senator Tim Scott pushing back against all of the left's election lies. Take a look. How can you have a legitimate conversation about something so sacred as voting? How can you distort the facts so terribly that you're willing, you're willing to, to, bring, to bring back the concept of a poll tax or the concept of Jim Crow? You only do that when you have nothing to stand on. Don't weaponize race in a powerful and destructive way when so many people fought and died so that we, I could be your senator. So I could stand here and have a conversation with you. And furthermore, instead of having two standards, two tiered signature verification system, the bill in Georgia actually strengthens the absentee ballot process. So we have the same standard for every ballot in the state of Georgia, in-person voting, absentee voting. And yes, you're allowed to bring food and water when you vote. And yes, election workers can hand it out also, just not partisan organizations within 150 feet from the voting booth. The new law also requires a voter ID or any state-issued ID or Social Security number to even get an absentee ballot, which is simple common sense, should, of course, be a requirement for the preservation of the sanctity of the ballot and to ensure that Georgians and Americans have faith in their election process and that they, in the end, will have confidence in its results. And you know what else? You know, think about what you need to show an ID for. Let's say you want to go visit Joe at the White House. Want to go to visit, go to the White House. Uh, you need a picture ID. Want to go to the U.S. Capitol, visit the People's House, meet your congressman or congresswoman? Yeah, you need a picture ID. Go to the Democratic National Convention, get on an airplane, buy a house, apply for a mortgage, buy alcohol, buy cigarettes, even buy my famous jewel pods, like here. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you want to apply for food stamps, apply for a job, apply for welfare programs. If you want to apply for Medicare, Medicaid, apply for unemployment. If you want to drive, buy or rent a car, purchase a gun, adopt a pet, rent a hotel room, pick up a prescription at your drugstore, donate blood, purchase some cold and allergy medicines like oh, Allegra D and on and on and on. And furthermore, voter ID is overwhelmingly popular. Look at this poll from the AP. Have found a whopping 72% of you, the American people, you approve requiring photo IDs to vote. But Joe Biden, the Democrats, they don't want you to know these facts. Sadly, he got caught once again playing the race card, dividing this country, is fueling nothing but vicious, divisive racial rhetoric about Jim Crow and voter suppression with zero evidence and no facts behind it. And Biden's lies are so bad that even the Washington Post is calling him out for his lies. He got four Pinocchios for his claims about voter suppression. Now, this is the same Biden, you know, the one that said, we're going to put you all back in chains and you can't go to a 7-Eleven or Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. 
or what he said about uh, President Obama. For the first time, you got an African American that's clean, articulate, and bright. Man, that's storybook. And earlier today, our own Peter Ducey pressed circle back Jen Psaki on the issue. Let's take a look. He said the law would end voting at 5 o'clock when working people are just getting off. And he said it would end voting hours early so working people can't cast their vote after their shift is over. But the Washington Post gave that claim four Pinocchios because that part of the law gives counties the option to extend voting hours. And so I'm just curious if the president is going to change the way that he's talking. Well, fundamentally, the president doesn't believe it should be made harder to vote. He believes it should be easier. But the thing he said has been determined by election law experts to be not true. So I'm just curious if he's going to stop saying that. Well, again, I think we can, uh, the fact checkers will also tell you that uh, this bill does not make it easier for people across the state of Georgia to vote. And that's where he has concerns. Circle back, propaganda Saki got caught red handed. Joe got caught red handed. They're lying. And get this the irony Georgia's voting law is far, far, far less restrictive. Then Joe's beloved home state of Delaware, for example, Delaware has no in-person early voting. Georgia has 17 days of in-person early voting. Delaware requires specific excuses if you want to vote absentee. In Georgia, anyone can vote absentee. In Delaware, there are no ballot drop boxes, and Georgia drop boxes are still available under the new law, and one box per county is required by the new law. And by the way, it's the same Joe Biden. Remember, he's the guy lying about Jim. Jim Crow 2.0. That's the same Joe Biden who was worried about our schools, if they became integrated, becoming, quote, racial jungles. That's when he partnered with the former Klansmen to stop that from happening. Joe Biden, the same person that worked with Robert KKK Bird, preventing the integration of schools and calling out black youth as predators on our streets and said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. Now, where was the outrage from all these pathetic woke corporations like Major League Baseball, Delta Airlines, American Airlines, Coca-Cola on all of this? Now, 200 apparently corporations. You want to get involved in this game? Get ready, because it'll happen. Why the hell did any of these companies get involved in the first place with no knowledge? But give Joe Biden a total pass in terms of his history. And why do they want to amplify lies about what this law is and is not and use it as another excuse to lie, smear, and besmirch conservatives? Did any of these companies actually read the law? I doubt it. And by the way, do they have any idea what it actually does? I doubt that, too. Did they just surrender to the mob of the woke extremists and cancel culture because they are a bunch of corporate cowards who would rather demonize you, we, the American people, and spew lies and get yelled at by loud liberals on Twitter? And I have a specific message for the Commissioner Rob Manfred of the MLB. Well, why are you going to bat against what is better voter integrity in Georgia than Delaware, Joe's state, or New York, Schumer's state? Why are you taking the all-star game out of Atlanta, which is going to cost Georgia and specifically Fulton County, Cobb County, Democrats, yeah, $100 million in revenue? Are you really that spineless? Are you really that stupid? Because the league apparently has no problem. Well, MLB, they do business in China. And we're learning tonight that MLB is bolstering its ties with one of China's largest tech companies, which is backed by, yep, CCP and actually cracked down on an NBA executive back in 2019 who supported the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. And by the way, can you pick... Pick up will call tickets for a baseball game, sporting event, concert. If you don't have a picture ID, no, you cannot. Senator Marco Rubio had this strong message for the commissioner, saying in a statement, quote, I am under no illusion that Major League Baseball will sacrifice business revenue on behalf of its alleged corporate values. Similarly, I'm under no illusion that you intend to resign as a member from Augusta National Golf Club. To do so would require a personal sacrifice as opposed to the woke corporate virtue signaling of moving the all-star game from Atlanta. And why is Joe Biden not being held accountable for his role in starting and fueling the entire fire? Peter Ducey asked Circleback Jen Psaki to explain that. Take a look. I know that you made the point 
that he did not dictate the league move the All-Star game out of Georgia, mm-hmm. but he likes to say the words of a president matter. He said he would strongly support if players in the league wanted to do that, and they did it. So do you, does he think that the PGA should move the Masters tournament that begins this week out of Georgia? I'm not here to call for anyone on behalf of the president or the vice president or anyone to take steps in reaction to the law in Georgia. The president was asked a direct question, and the context of the question was also around uh, the league meeting to discuss this exact issue. And he answered the question. Joe, in favor of boycotting the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing? Let's be clear. There's nothing controversial about the Georgia law. There's nothing controversial about wanting free and fair elections. There's definitely nothing controversial about showing an ID to vote, unless, of course, you want to cheat. So why have major corporations chosen to sell out and surrender to the Democrats' lies and misinformation campaign? Are these companies now... Will they be as principled and outspoken against those 22, 22 Winter Olympics in Beijing? Are they going to be sponsoring those Olympics in China? And will Joe ask the Olympics be, to be moved to another country? It's bad business. It's pathetic virtue signaling. It's a massive hypocrisy and double standard. And we will continue to expose it here.